Hello, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about interaction of forces and the system. And this is part one. Um, in uh, lecture 16, we'll get to part two and get a little bit deeper into some of these topics. Um, so a quick review of forces and vectors that we talked about previously. Uh, so force is an influence that can change the shape or motion of a system. It doesn't have to always change the shape or motion of a system, but it is capable of changing it. Um, there are usually, and I should say always, you know, when we're on Earth, <laughs> uh, there are always several forces acting on the body at once. Uh, and that's where we get into drawing our free body diagrams, uh, because that's how we visually display different forces acting on lever systems and, and on the body. Um, so forces are graphically represented by vectors. And a quick reminder about vectors. V vectors show us the direction the force is being applied the orientation of the force, so how is it oriented compared to our frame of reference, uh, the location of where the force is being applied in the system, and then the amount of force, that's the magnitude, and the line of action of the force, so the theoretically infinite direction of the force in either direction. Uh, motion is any change in position that may be described in both spatial and temporal frames of reference. So again, there has to be a traveling in space and a passing of time that takes place for something to be considered motion. All right, so getting into our laws of motion here, uh, law of inertia, a body at rest will stay at rest and a body in motion will stay in motion until a force acts on the body to change its state. Okay, so this boulder we're looking at is going to stay exactly where it is forever unless there is a force that acts on it to cause it to move. And vice versa, if this boulder was rolling, it would continue to roll forever and ever unless a force acts to change its state. So the reason the boulder won't roll forever and ever is because gravity and friction are acting on it and that causes it to slow and eventually stop its motion. So inertia is a system's resistance to a change in the state of motion or rest by an externally applied force. Okay, so it is because of inertia that a body at rest stays at rest and a body in motion stays in motion. Um, so it's overcoming that inertia that is what's required to cause motion or to change motion. So something with more mass will have more inertia. Something with less mass will have less inertia. Uh, so this big boulder has a lot of mass, so it has a lot of inertia. That means it's going to require a great force to overcome that inertia and cause motion. Compared to if this was a very small little rock, it had much less mass, it would have a lot less inertia and require a lot less force to be able to overcome its inertia and cause motion. Okay, the law of acceleration says that the change in motion of a system in response to an externally applied force depends on the direction and magnitude of the force. So what that motion looks like in response to the force, so like if we go and apply a force and push that boulder, the motion that results is going to depend on the direction and amount of force that I apply to that boulder. So acceleration is the change in a system state of rest or motion that is produced by a force. So that's a change in direction or a change in speed. Okay, so acceleration, it could be that we turn the corner or it could be that we started going faster or slower, that would be negative acceleration. Uh, the change in motion will be proportionate to the amount and direction of the force. Okay, so imagine we're just on a flat ground and we've got this boulder and I walk up and push the boulder as hard as I can. It's going to move in the direction I push it and it's going to move proportionately to the amount of force I applied to push it. Okay, so it's not like I'm going to push it and it's going to roll this way or to the left or something like that. It's going to roll in the direction my force is applied and by the appropriate amounts proportionate to the amount of force that I applied. So there's a big difference between I barely push it and I push with all my might and, and push as hard as I can. Okay, so the law of acceleration says that the change in motion of the system is going to be in the proportionate to the amount of 
the force and it's going to happen in the direction of the force. Okay, law of reciprocal actions. So every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Uh, the best example of that is ground reaction force. Um, so when we produce muscle force, we contract our muscles to extend our limbs and we're trying to jump off the ground. So let's take that example. So let's say we're standing on the ground and we're in flexion, like we go down into a squat maybe, and then we very quickly extend all of our limbs and push off the ground to jump off the ground. Well, our muscles are not what caused us to jump off the ground. It's the ground reaction force that caused us to jump off the ground. So when we contract our muscles and produce muscle force, we're exerting force. When I extend all of my limbs, I'm exerting force in a downward direction against the ground. The ground is exerting an equal and opposite force, resisting my force, and that is what causes me to move in an upward direction. Okay, because the earth has such a large mass, it doesn't accelerate in response to the muscle force. So when I produced that muscle force into extension, so I'm producing a muscle force that's going down into the ground, if I was pushing against something with a smaller mass, I wouldn't move, the thing I'm pushing would move. So like, let's say I'm standing on an empty cardboard box or on a table or, or something, and I did the same action, <clears throat> I did the same action, the thing with the less mass is going to move. So if I'm on an empty cardboard box, I shouldn't expect to jump up off of the box necessarily. I should more expect that the box is gonna move away from under me when I do that because it has less mass than me. Okay, so because the earth has such a large mass, we're not pushing the earth when we use our muscles to push against the ground. Instead, because I have less mass, my body moves away because the ground reaction force pushes against me. Okay, so ground reaction force, the opposing force exerted by the earth in response to an applied force. Okay, and that's the difference, like, like if I'm standing in a canoe, and I tried to jump. Well, um, depending on the scenario, how big the canoe is and all that kind of stuff, it's not gonna have the same effect as if I'm standing on the ground because the ground is going to exert a ground reaction force against me so that I jump. If I try to push and I'm in the water, the water is not gonna exert that ground reaction force in the same way. Uh, the reaction forces in water operate differently than the reaction force on the ground. Okay, so, and we'll talk about water later on. I think that's in the next lecture. All right, so law of universal gravitation. All bodies in the universe exert a gravitational force on other objects, uh, but it's proportionate to the mass of the body and the distance between the two bodies. And here by body, I mean like two objects. So two bodies could be like the earth and the moon, for example. Um, so everything all exerts gravitational force on other things, but it's proportionate to how big that thing is. So really the gravitational pull of the earth is it, <laughs> dwarfs everything else, that's the big one, uh, dwarfs everything else. To a lesser extent, there's a gravitational pull of the moon, which does you know, affect our tides. And um, to some extent it's theorized that it affects the fluids and and uh, chemicals in our bodies. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily been scientifically demonstrated, but I think that's theoretical. Um, so we are mostly affected by gravitational force of the earth and maybe to some extent from the moon, um, but everything, I exert a gravitational pull, the couch exerts a gravitational pull. It's just that these things have such smaller mass than the earth um, that those gravitational pulls are dwarfed. The line of gravity, like we talked about in a past lecture, is the vertical line representing the location of the gravitational pull of an object. So it's just a vertical line perpendicular to the ground representing um, the gravitational pull through the center of gravity of an object. So the center of mass, where the mass is concentrated, is where the gravity would be concentrated. Weight is the measure of gravitational pull on the object, which is directly proportionate to the object's mass. So the mass is the amount of stuff that makes something up. 
and then weight is when we consider it's basically a measure of how much gravity is affecting that much mass um, so weight would be different on each planet because gravity would be different on each planet even though the mass of the object remains the same uh, so we'll get into calculating that and everything in future lectures okay field forces a non-contact force that acts between objects at a distance is a field force. We have four types. Uh, two of them are very relevant in biomechanics and two not at all, so we won't really talk about them at all. Uh, so strong nuclear force, not at all important to us. Uh, it's the strongest field force that occurs between subatomic particles to hold the nucleus of an atom together. I mean, obviously it's important, but in the field of biomechanics, we don't really do anything with this. Electromagnetic force is the second strongest force, uh, which is a force that occurs between electric charges, like when two magnets are held close together and they attract or repel one another. This is very relevant to biomechanics. Although we don't study it directly, we sort of study its effects. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, weak nuclear force, not at all important in biomechanics related to radioactive decay and nuclear reactions and then gravitational force is the last one that i just discussed um, and of course highly relevant in biomechanics okay so in biomechanics it's all about electromagnetic and gravitational force not at all we don't care about strong and weak nuclear forces all right so contact forces result from direct contact between two bodies. And again, I just mean two objects, uh, whether that's the body and the ground or two inanimate objects, whatever that might be. Um, technically, these occur as a result of electric field forces, like we just talked about um, when we look at an atomic level. But because that's not practical for us to study in biomechanics, we really are studying the effects. And those effects we refer to as contact forces. Okay, so we're really looking at the relative movement between two objects and how they're interacting, and we call that contact force, but really it's the, the more accessible way to study electric field forces, which are what is happening at an atomic level. Okay, external and internal forces is just a way to describe any kind of force in its relationship to the system. So an external, also called an extrinsic force, would be a force that's exerted outside the system, and it'd be capable of changing only the motion of the system. And an internal or an intrinsic force would be a force that's happening within the system or produced inside of the system, and it's capable of changing only the shape. So if we think about my example of you're squatting down and then you extend your limbs and to jump off of the ground, the muscle forces in that case would be the internal forces that are capable of changing the shape of the body. So I can change from a flexed position to an extended position, but it's the ground reaction force that's the external force that actually changes the motion. So my body changes the shape, my muscle forces change the shape of my body, and then the ground reaction force causes motion for me to actually jump off of the ground, and that would be the external force. Which forces are external or internal vary depending on the system. Now there are a couple that are always true. So gravity is always external. My body is not exerting gravity on my own body. Okay, so gravitational force is always an external force. Muscle force is always an internal force. Oops. Um, and so those are always consistent, but other kinds of forces could be internal or external depending on what's happening. So like friction is a good example of that. There's friction between my body and the ground, that would be external, but I could also have friction between two bones within a joint and that would be internal. Okay, so all kinds of forces could be happening internally or externally applied to the body, um, except gravity and muscle force are, are always consistent. Okay, muscle forces. So muscle forces are capable of changing the shape of the system, like I mentioned uh, just a minute ago. Uh, without gravity and contact with other objects, muscle force does not change motion. Okay, so when I extend my limbs, 
it's only because I am standing on the ground because of gravity and I'm contacting the ground and getting that ground reaction force. That's the only reason there's actual motion where I leave the ground. Um, otherwise, my muscles are simply changing the shape of my body. Okay, the ground reaction force exerted by the earth in response to the body changing shape causes the extension of the body to propel the body away from the earth. Um, or like in gait, it's the same thing. It's my muscles are changing the shape of my limbs and, and the orientation of my limbs relative to my body, but it's their contact with the ground that is actually causing the movement. It's actually causing the motion in a forward direction is when my feet are pressing off of the ground. So the ground reaction force is resisting that. And that's what's actually propelling me. Okay, so action and reaction forces. An action force is the initially applied force like the contraction of muscles to jump off the ground and the reaction is the equal counter force that acts opposite the action force. In some cases, it can be really hard to tell which one is which because um, they're happening at the same time. So in some cases, it might be very difficult or even impossible to tell which was the action versus the reaction force. Uh, but in some cases, it can be pretty obvious um, like the muscle contraction would be the action force and the ground reaction force, that's why it's called that, is always a reaction force. Um, so sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's happening at the same time and it's not obvious at all. Um, the reaction force is an external force, which means it can change the motion of the system. Okay, so the action force is going to be internal and the reaction is going to be external. All right, pressure. Um, people commonly use the terms force and pressure synonymously, and that is not correct. Um, pressure is the amount of force applied over a given area. So like we see in this picture here, that red arrow, that's the force vector of a force. But then if we distribute that application of force over that whole area, the little green vectors are showing the pressure. So we're seeing all these little force vectors divided over that whole area, and that is the pressure. So it's force divided by the area over which the force is applied. So pressure does not equal force. They are not the same thing. Uh, they're very closely related, and they're similar because pressure is really just how much force is applied over this area, um, but that's not the same thing as strictly force. Okay, atmospheric pressure is the pressure from the gases or fluids surrounding us that weigh on the body. That includes pressure surrounding us when we're in water, swimming, and when we're above water, when we're in air. Uh, so that includes air pressure and water pressure, just whatever is surrounding us. Uh, changes with elevation above sea level or depth underwater. And again, we'll talk about water um, and forces of water in the next lecture. Okay, so that is all I have for this lecture, and I'll see you next time.